Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to episode 76 of Mind Heist. I can't believe it's been 76 episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever, do you ever, sometimes I, I go on like a very old one mm. and, and play it just to see if I remember it. And I, I seem to like remember the exact conversations. Really? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'll, ha- I'll, you know, I'll start it off and I'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember this. I haven't had a time where I've like played one and I thought, I don't remember speaking like this at all. I don't remember this conversation <laughs> at all. <laughs> I can't say I've really. played, you know, there's, I think it's episode 55. For example, for, for some reason, whenever I finish listening to a recent one, it finishes that, it goes straight to 55. So it keeps playing 55. Oh, really? Uh, just the beginning of it. But yeah, I think if I listen to like the first 20 episodes. You won't be sure. I won't like, uh, I feel like we could have, we're better than then. That's why I was on. Yeah, yeah, alhamdulillah. Yeah. I mean, you were recently on uh, Freshly Grounded. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, bro. Very key. You know, I, don't, like, I, I see Freshly Grounded as like, uh, definitely one of the top, I guess, five uh, podcasts in terms of size, audience. Um, mm-hmm. But I, obviously, we don't see the downloads on the, on the audio side, do we? We just yeah. see YouTube. But YouTube, yeah. bro, um, I tried to... You know, I tried to get it as the engagement rolling there. So, uh, the, like, there's more comments there than the average one. And, there's, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I've tried to get that going and stuff and replying to people there. Um, and uh, apparently, I mean, it's not what I do, but apparently a lot of people watch podcasts. So, uh, the video oh, yeah, version yeah. is important. I, th- I think, yeah, but a lot of people do. I personally, I don't think I'd have the... I can't. I just have to. It has to be something that I do with something else. And yeah, man, right exactly. now the only the only opportunity I have is like a ten minute drive to and from work. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm. I think I'm about maybe just over halfway listening. But mm. so far, so good, bro. It's definitely. Mm. Uh, I think you managed to almost consolidate everything we sort of um, talk about it in Mind Heist into one sort of quick episode with Facebook, which is really yeah. good in terms of like it's mm. really good though. Well, like, mm. it's very very good, very concise. You know, it was very last minute. So usually what I would like to do is, um, basically the way I see it is whenever you get on, put onto a, you know, quite a big platform, you want to give the right first impression. And I don't just mean make yourself seem good, but you want people to basically be able to categorize you in the way that you want to be categorized. And uh, usually I would like to think of a few stories I'd like to tell and a few, you know, little things like that, a few frameworks to share. Um, just to, so the episode is better than the average episode and it stands yeah. out to people. But mm. I had like literally like 12 hours, you know, advance notice. So, yeah, but having said that, I, I still shared a few stories and stuff. So I think it was a good alhamdulillah. And uh, if you're halfway through, you're yet to hear some of the juicier bits maybe. So okay. it's good, bro. Half of it was good to just get on freshly grounded and half of it was just to, good to speak to Faisal because uh, like he said at the beginning, Yanni, when we met, the one time we met, we didn't, Yanni, fully able to get into it. So Yeah. Yeah, it happens, bro, I suppose. Alhamdulillah, if anybody hasn't listened to it now, um, yeah, please do give it a chance. And so give it I said give it a chance, like expect it to be bad. No, <laughs> yeah. I meant like give it a listen. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah. yeah, it's really beneficial. And then we we've we've been a bit slow with releases, mainly my fault, but um we should be back on track now, alhamdulillah. Mm. Um although it's good, I think, to have a little bit of a See, Ramadan is a bit of a difficult time. This Ramadan has been quite different, hasn't it? Um, especially for myself, I suppose. Um, and, uh, you know, adapting to the lockdown and adapting to um, shift work. And, and Well, actually, I didn't really work most of Ramadan. <laughs> yeah. um, as some of people might know, I am. Um, my, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy, isn't it? A lot of people that listen to my ties would be like following, uh, following my following our journeys, I suppose, as we go along, you know, um, subhanAllah, we, I, we started Mind Heist like years ago, really. I was still working in retail and mm. to think, and all the, it's interesting because it's like a diary almost because all the, the worries and the struggles we, at least on my said, my end of things, I, w- I was very vocal about what I go through and stuff. And, mm. um, you just don't know what the future holds, subhanAllah. Um, oh. and some of you may know, um, my my dad was um, was diagnosed with stage four cancer, um, and it, it, it's it's very um, profound, really, because I I've spoken a lot about my relationship with my dad on my dice, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, 
and you know some of the con- not concerns but like some of the things that i have to think about and um stuff like that and i think uh since it's been interesting to sort of deal with that now um but lillahi l- l- um so it's good actually because a lot of the content we've put out on mind heist is it's almost like it's built me for this sort of moment you know um and that's you know we speak a lot about masculinity we speak a lot about parenting we speak a lot about leadership what it means to be a man uh finding ourselves in these sort of in this world and um mm. we also it, speak it, about dealing with the hardships of life i think we end up on that topic mm. Mm. And i think um uh, it's, life's on a bit of a precipice of chaos right now because uh, mm. it's very unpredictable um uh, you know it's almost like a, I, I i personally feel like i'm on the edge of the complete unknown because um you know once i mean may Allah grant she fed to my father but i mean um, it's not something uh, you know I, I, my mind travels a lot and I, I often think about possibilities and what could happen in the dunya you know even today subhanallah i was driving back home from work and i had my arm uh, on the side of the you know the passenger seat and um I know it's very random, but I had a, almost like a vision like, oh, if I crash a car now, my arm would just snap off mm. because I've got it in this position. And then I, th- I thanked Allah in that moment that I still have my arm. Do you understand what I mean? Like I'll, I'll, I'll play scenarios in my head, which allow yeah. me to, to thank Allah for the blessings mm. I still have. Yeah. Um, but the scenario like this is something that never crossed my mind. Line. It's always the unexpected things, you know? Mm. Um, Never, ever, ever crossed my mind. Um, I, I want to ask you, bro. I like, go for you it. Know, you know, what I, I've noticed is that Muslims tend to handle th- this kind of news better than, than the non-Muslims I know or, or that I've heard of or whatever, right? Mm. Um, and, and maybe you would think the same. Um, but when something like this uh, actually hit you, do you feel like, you know, you know, at least just being Muslim and stuff, do you think that really helped you in that moment? Absolutely. Absolutely, bro. Mm. Um, we, we put purpose into the, the things that we, we go through. Um, and without purpose, you, you just feel like the world's out to get you and you're being punished. Um, I see now, like, remember, okay, I'll tell you something. You remember how not even that long ago, I was talking deeply about like my anxiety at work. Yeah. Um, I was talking, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I was talking about like anxiety about working on my own, the risks it poses to me. Um, yeah, yeah. This news and it, this this news I received has almost rationalised every other struggle I've ever had, um, to the point where I've seen now that those struggles and anxieties and those tests I was going through were just preparing me for this. I felt like Allah Subhanahu wa Taala put me in a very testing environment, to the point where I just about stood on my two feet and got on top of it. And the moment I did, I was faced with this news. And now. You know, the past two days I've worked on my own at work and absolutely like, yes, there is a small bit of anxiety of, of the unknown, which I think is healthy. I think it's fine to be nervous about the unknown uh, um, because it prepares you for, for things to come. Um, but I've just been almost like water off a duck's back. Like this, this is nothing, you know, this is dunya, this is nothing. Um, and it reminds me, I don't, I think I did mention it uh, last episode about Sheikh Bilal said. um, speaking about his son and his uh, brother passing and he he spoke about this and I, I see parts of myself in his behavior um i googled i uh, youtubed his name today so i searched on youtube to see some recent lectures of his and i was comparing his demeanor and his character in previous lectures hmm. and his lectures since the passing yeah. and it's almost like you can just see that this this man has relinquished himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fully. Um, he has lost so much, but in turn gained um, true understanding of the the dunya. You know, not to say he didn't understand it before, but it's mm. almost like Allah has, 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 has given something, thrown something directly in his face to really make him realize mm. that the um, mm. temporary nature of this dunya. Mm. You know? It's like when you know the theory of something versus having real life experience. Mm, mm. because how long how often do we speak about tests and trials and tests and trials until a trial befalls you that is way bigger than what you what you imagined and you know i think that's that that's what muslims in general need to prepare themselves for is the unexpected um 
uh, I think we 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 are comfortable, at least in the West, and at least you know, in, generally across the board, Muslims are generally comfortable. Uh, of course, there are oppressed Muslims in the world. Of course, there are Muslims that desperately need help, desperately need saving, desperately need you know, um, f- freeing from the oppressors. Um, but generally speaking, um, many many Muslim countries have things that you know have the the luxuries that we they may not have had a, a time before, you know. Um, and I think we fall lax into that expectation. Like that is the status quo. The status quo is comfort. And we fall in love with the dunya more and more because we want more and more. And that's where, and, and you know, it's, there are many, many um, uh, narrations from the Prophet Sallallahu regarding, uh, you know, the, the the way that the ummah would be and the love for the dunya and the fear of death. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think this, this is really brings it home. And I think my only advice is don't, I'm not saying what's happened to me is the worst thing in the world. Of course it isn't. Of course it isn't. Um, I think it's just don't, 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 what's the word? Expect the unexpected, basically. Expect the unexpected. Mm. Honestly, even today, like I said earlier, I was driving and I thought, what is, what is the guarantee that I will have my left arm tomorrow? Like mm. a limb. Like I was looking at my limbs, Achi, like, there are people that just lose limbs and they never expected to. And they look at, you understand, like they look at their hands and feet and whatever every day and it's yeah. just taken for granted. And I, I actually thought, how different would my life be if I was to lose my left arm? How long would it take for me to adapt? And I just started picturing my wife coming and helping me with certain things. And I thought, oh, how do I pick up? Like, I, And I actually thought, you know, the graphic design stuff that I'm doing on the computer, I thought, how would I do that? Would it take me a while? Would I do you understand? And I know it's really, <laughs> really bad, but it's just almost like, so, like not a social experiment, but like almost like experimenting in your mind. Yeah. Like all the possible tests and trials that you could go through mm-hmm. um, and having that gratitude. Alhamdulillah, I'll be honest with you. You know, I was upset about my father's situation for, and when I say upset, like I hadn't rationalized it for like a day or two. Mm. Um, and then in the moment, I, 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 you know, alhamdulillah, I praised Allah in the moment. But, you know, you know, tears flow, et cetera, the day, first day, second day. And then your acceptance kicks in and your, your, okay, let's get down to business sort of thing kicks in because there are a lot of things to take care of for my father's sake. Um, but also your tawakkal kicks in, actually, because you could sit and you could worry and you could think, how am I going to fill his shoes and how am I going to... Um, take care of his responsibilities. Mm. Um, but actually, uh, when you remember that this this test itself came from Allah, then you remember that your your energy and your capability all comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. You remember yeah. that everything, everything comes from mm. Allah, you know? And then there's not just like how you react to it, but it's also how your dad, of course, reacts to it, how your mom reacts to all yeah. of that. And uh, I guess it's, I mean it's crazy to think of you receiving that news yourself about yourself as well. And, yeah, and really, really dealing with that concept uh, in, again, in a very practical real life way where it's like mm. the angel of death is probably going to come and get you soon. Mm. Well, um, you know, my, my relationship with my father has always been an interesting one. And my father's relationship with, with the Dean of Islam has always been one that had great potential. Um, but now uh, he's, uh, he's immediately just transformed him. The, the advice that he gives me, the things that he says, his consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even little things like the things that he sends me on WhatsApp, you know, the, the mentioning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's not, you know, for anybody who, who is faced with calamity or with a test or a trial, don't, Think, don't think that it's uh, uh, it's late to to, to 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 get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't know. In fact, that trial is Allah giving you a, a almost a forced invitation to remember Him and to to worship Him and to to put Him first. Um, because you know we are, we know we know Subhanallah that time is only up when death reaches your throat. You know, when you're just about to die, like that's that's when time time's up. Um, but actually, it's just the way you picture things, the way you visualize things. When you get news like this, that you're you know you're terminal, or you're with you've been faced with this condition, or you're about to die, or however long you have left to live, 
it's an invitation it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving you a, a gift really I remember speaking to my dad and I said to him you know my granddad died very suddenly um my granddad died he was hit with a car hit by a car in Tunisia and that was it you know no expectation mm. no and that left my family uh, at the time just completely or just imagine the leader of that family just snatched away all of a sudden and I'm, it happens everywhere actually. it's not you know isolated to my family it happens all over the world mm. um, and i said to him you know yes there's a lockdown and yes there's uh, less ability to travel and to take care of business and to take care of things and stuff however it's a big blessing for himself because he has time to rectify his affairs to 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 speak to his children to um to make to 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 put in the effort with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to seek repentance to uh, to have sins forgiven through the pain that he's enduring um yeah it's just about it's about positioning your mind in that way isn't it what was your focus um in terms of i think for me when i think of when i try and remind myself that you know, I could lose my parents any day, for example. I just think that uh, so much regret would fill me, right? In terms of like, there are so many simple ways I could I could be better to them. Um, and so if I, I feel like anyway, it's hard to know. But if I was in this situation, I'd be like, I'd be trying not to waste time in that sense. Um, but maybe if I felt like I was a better son, then um, I, that wouldn't be my priority. So what's your like, what has your, your focus been? Has it been like to, uh, for example, make amends or has it been like, oh no, I need to like fill his shoes. Like you said, like what, what kind of made that top priority level? Uh, for me, I think my priority has been to rectify my, um, my role as, as a leader of a family and my role as a man. Um, because um, without that, as as the only man left really in the family at this you know at least in the immediate um it's it it, it rests on, on my shoulders and even if the if, even if even if like family members don't feel that way or don't you know agree Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put me in that position you know um and I know it, it, it's difficult for for my sisters to, to accept that sometimes because I've grown up with them as a sibling not as a father figure or um and and then it's made me think a lot about my own kids and it's made me think a lot about how i represent myself and how i position myself and you know am i have i spent too much time joking and laughing and, and and having fun um you know with them and in front of them or can i be or have i been too weak in front of them or have i given them reason to not have faith in my ability to lead you know um Mm. And I, I, it's these things that have actually made me think a lot because I used to think that men and women were very similar. I, used to, I generally used to think that. I remember that book that I think you have as well, Men Are From Mars and yeah. Women Are From Be just reading it from here. Um, I remember when, I, when my wife first got that for me or for us, I was just like, this is just, just, just nonsense. We're very similar. Like we're, you know, I mm. feel what you feel. I can understand what you want. And then, with time especially now now more than ever i've realized actually the only way things work is if men shoulder burdens that they can't they shouldn't share with others um because the moment you share you expose yourself to to um, weakness and frailty which then undermines your the, the trust that people have in you to to do well and to succeed mm. and and you know well, this has kind of uh reinforce that idea that you had before yeah mm, really? definitely mm. definitely um for example if you know if everybody's crying and upset in the family for example in a particular moment then you you as a man don't do that you can't do that you shouldn't do that um, you shouldn't let yourself get to that mm. point if you mm. are financially responsible for everybody um you know even even here in, with my wife and kids if i'm financially responsible then i shouldn't tell my wife I'm mm. struggling financially yeah. or this yeah. is how much money we yeah. have left yeah. or do you understand? Mm. Because they have, they have trust in you uh, to yeah. take care of things. Mm. Um, and I think what I have found is that it's, it's good to speak to brothers who are independent of your situation 
about you know advice if you need to talk to someone etc yeah. because they can advise you sincerely and ultimately it's better to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah um yeah it, it's, it's made me think a lot yeah. about yeah how how men were and how men should be and how yeah. things work mm. in the best of ways mm. um you know bro i'm really because, glad to hear that in a way <laughs> in a weird way yeah. but because <laughs> um i have a chapter in the book i'm working on about this topic of like emotional vulnerability mm. and for me it's obviously writing this book it obviously i've got my own experience but it is a bit of a theoretical exercise right but what you're saying now is like confirming the actual um the learnings that i took directly from like the sunnah and it's crazy mm. like uh for example uh, this is a, maybe the best example or story that, that I've kind of taken on this topic of emotional, being vulnerable emotionally. The Prophet ﷺ, when he was in the cave and he first, you know, received wahi, he was very shaken by the experience. And, um, you know, he went, he, he left that cave after first receiving it. He was questioning himself and all of that. But, like, so he was shaken, right? So he had the emotions. He had it. Like, you can't say he never had the emo He had the emotions. He was an emotional man, subhanAllah. But, but what's interesting is he kept a level head uh, to the level where he was able to go to his wife. He knew who to go to, and he knew to tell her what to do, right? So he, mm. even though he was in that vulnerable situation where he wasn't going to wrap himself up, but he knows I need my wife to wrap me up, right? So he still had that. He was level-headed enough to say, uh, thiruni, thiruni, cover me up, right? Um, and so for me, that's like actually how, how it is, like the, the masculine way to deal with things, that you feel emotion and you don't show overwhelm to those that are leaning on you. Hmm. Um, and, and you stay level-headed, right? Another hmm. example is like... Um, uh, Musa alayhi salam with his brother Harun. Mm. They said, I think it's in Surah Al Taha, they were actually open about their emotions, but it was to each other rather than to their family, from what yani, we, we know. Like mm. they said, uh, Musa said to Allah, he said, Inna na we are scared. Now, why is he speaking on behalf of him and his brother? Because he knows his brother's scared because they shared that with each other, right? Mm. Um, Another example is of a Sahabi that we know of who um, he actually was lying on the lap of his wife and he was crying and crying. And she, so he's being now emotionally vulnerable. But it's interesting, what was he being emotionally vulnerable about? She said, you know, why are you crying? He said, I'm, uh, because they were citing Quran actually. He said, you know, I'm scared of Yom Qiyam. I'm scared that I won't make it uh, past the Sirat. I won't make it to Jannah. And so that is an area where it's like, She's not relying on him for that. She's not leaning on him for that. So he was vulnerable in that. Um, but, but I think it's very different when it's like, oh, I don't know how I'm going to pay next month's rent. You know, yeah. it's a different yeah. situation. So it, you're yeah. kind of confirming some of these like more theoretical things that I've been finding. Mm. It's definitely, um, it's definitely something that needs deep thought because every single action we take, every, you know, it's, it's, it's it's in the same way that leaders of countries reflect their people. You know, um, every single action you take has a knock-on effect, um, whether big or small. Uh, it's you know every action you take has a rippling effect, especially on your family, um, and that's it, that's also included is um, your deeds. Your you know your sins as a man affect those the people that you're responsible for and I, I i deeply deeply believe in that the baraka of your hands affects the baraka that your family has access to if you're definitely if you're providing for your family you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can snatch your blessings away from you for for your ignorance and your arrogance and your your you know your your bad intentions and your, you understand like your evil ways and your evil tendencies because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can easily punish you for a sin that you commit in this dunya before any punishment in the, in the next life. However, what punishment will you get? I can't think of one right now. What punishment can I get that wouldn't affect my family as well? Like, what is it? Because any punishment I get will affect me mentally. For example, let's say the weakest level of it, I'll be mentally affected, you know, because a punishment is going to negatively impact me. If I'm negatively impacted, then I'm not in the right frame of mind to, 
to go to work or to provide for my family to help them out etc 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 et mm-hmm. so and that's just the, the minor if you're majorly impacted with i don't know you know a, a severe accident or some health or crisis or whatever it is then you know that that goes without saying you are yeah. you're not there for them mm-hmm. so this is why and, and on top of that you know you lead by example if you are committing certain sins or you're um, you've got certain issues. Those rub off into your children. Those rub off into your spouse, your brothers, your sisters, mm. your mother, your father, anybody. Because especially if you put, position yourself as somebody who aspires to be religious or aspires to lead Islamically, then their understanding is either you're a hypocrite or what you're doing is fine and it's okay to do. Do you understand what I mean? And that way the, the waters get a bit murky. And mm. so it's a big, big, big responsibility. And I think this this has what so i said earlier i thought men and women were similar didn't i mm. i said this now has made me absolutely understand the role you know when when the last panel ta'ala says you know it's very easy to let the uh, the west west of the western feminism come into your mind and say but surely we're equal or whatever Do you understand what i'm trying to say like that debate can come into your head and you might not have the ammunition to fight it off and a lot of men say but men are in charge and blah 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 um but there's no substance to that statement you know they just say they almost say it like it's just a label that that they've been given as opposed to they've actually practically thought about what that means yeah and situational you know in a situational context where everything everything should and can rely on you and rely on your well-being as a man and as your your health and your patience you know, if you're impatient, your family suffers. If you're angry, your family suffers. Anything that you do mistake-wise or, or it's a deficiency in yourself, those that you're responsible for will suffer the consequences. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that itself shows that you shoulder. I mean, why, why is it that, subhanAllah, we are going to be questioned about our flock? Isn't that the, the correct understanding? Is that um, every one of you is a shepherd and each one of you will be questioned about mm-hmm. his flock? Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Mm-hmm. This is it. This is it. Interesting, actually. Kullukum mas'ool an ra'iyati, right? Mas'ool, normally, if you ask any Arab, what does mas'ool mean? They would say responsible. But mas'ool actually comes also from sa'ala or su'ilu, yeah? To be asked about. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the both, uh, there's the apparent meaning to be responsible. And then there is also, if you take the root word, sa'ala, it's you're going to be asked about it. Oh, I didn't know. Like so I didn't like know it's about built the, into it. Mm. I didn't know about the responsible meaning. I when you said it, I immediately thought about settle. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So that's my. That was my direct. Uh, like if you say in your manager, in Arabic, if you say "Oh, my manager," you might say "My mas'ul," the one who's responsible for oh, me. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Um, I suppose we just say "Malam." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Subhanallah. But bro, it's just. Uh, it's a, it's deep and, and I think mm. what what does frustrate me now is seeing men not rise up to that responsibility and mm. living selfish lives. Mm. Um, you know, we, we 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 are prone to making selfish decisions. We are prone to pushing back on this responsibility because we we don't want anything to slow us down. There's a lot of men that have whether it's too much pride or too much interest in their own ambitions and their dunya um, or their desires even push back on these responsibilities that quote unquote hold us back um because for example um you going out and socializing or spending money on yourself or going traveling or whatever it is um if you've got family with you yes sure you can take them with you but however there are you know there are days quite often where you could either spend on your family or spend on yourself you know should i purchase this new jacket for myself or should i purchase a, a brand new bike for my son should i fulfill this thing that my wife's been waiting to get sorted out for ages or should i not there's always a list of things that need to be done and there's always an alternative thing that you can do to for yourself whether that's just to push it back whether that's to actually make a completely different decision and you know the capacity mm. for man to be selfish mm. um is there um uh, and it's 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 a difficult thing to accept i think you know when i was 16 i I, 16 that kind of age i I really pushed back on these responsibilities in a sense you know whether it was tunisia whether it was taken over from my dad whether it was you know the idea of marriage or all of this stuff you know a lot of teenagers do because we live in a society that wants to promote 
you know the teenage dream so to speak of just live fast die young and all that mm. sort of stuff um, mm. but when it really hits the fan you make a decision whether you want to if you care about your family you want to mm. be there for them and be what they need you to be or if you want to completely go off the you know go off the map and do your own thing um, mm. and it's but interesting been, I think. like you said you've been prepared for this subhanallah like that is the that's the mad bit here because I think uh, this is my feeling. I think we talked about it before in Mind Heist. Like, um, women uh, tend to be quite happy to uh, take on responsibilities without really having to or being asked to, right? Yeah. Whereas I think uh, men uh, need the, these, um, these kind of events to happen uh, for them to stand up. And that's why yeah. I feel like Allah made us uh, responsible. Uh, mm. he, he married the two like perfect... Uh, things together so um we are we are responsible and we're kind of the leaders but then also he made it that uh we we kind of don't take responsibility without the those events of leadership you know being mm. needed and mm. so when they come together i guess that's where you find out if you're a real man or not and, and this is also where women carry a lot of burden when it comes to like uh children you know uh, pregnancy looking after children Especially when children are young, it's like there's only so much the man can do, the father can do, right? Of course. Um, and I feel like there's, there's balance in everything. So whereas it might be quite apparent that women uh, struggle with that side of things and that's difficult, I think this is the bit where, where men um, have the burden, right? And the thing mm. is, though, that maybe sometimes men just... Uh, quit quit when when the time comes for this you know sometimes you can quit mm. but just how women can quit sometimes you know you could give up your child for adoption or whatever it is yeah. sometimes people do yeah. that um and and so i think this is your burden and it's like will i take it how will i take it all of that and but inshallah you yeah, know do i want to yeah you've been, you've been prepared for it alhamdulillah like you said and uh what is there a hadith i think where it's like uh, patience is at the first instant uh, patience is at the first impact. That's the that's kind of the patience. Yeah. And um, you know how like when you stub your toe, you know how you react says about your preparation for that moment. Even though it's a small moment, yeah. it's the same applies here. Yeah. I think with bigger pains. Mm. And it's reflective on your iman level. I I was advising a friend of mine. Um, he he's you know i mean nobody knows who he is so i think it's fine he, he's he was having issues with his his marriage and he was asking me for advice um and he wasn't i'll be honest he was bouncing between whether he would get a divorce or not you mm. know um and uh i asked him how do you feel about your wife when your iman is high you know when you have your days where your iman is high how do you feel about your wife and he said um Actually, things are fine when, when my iman is high, things are fine. I said, so it may be that you're making a decision based on your low iman, which, in, which says to me that you're making a decision based on desires as opposed to mm, your trust in Allah yeah. subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's allowed me to think actively about, you know, how I feel about certain things in my life or choices I would make if my iman was high. And even if I have a day of low iman, then I try to think if my iman was high, what would I do in this situation? Let me do that just so that I can save myself from any headache or any, mm. you know, you see, bro, you just, you've made your own self-help principle there. <laughs> that's, where, that's how they're born, bro. I think so. <laughs> um, because, yeah, I think so. I suppose It's very important though, okay, because we, you know, our, our man fluctuates all the time. So I don't want to live with the, um, the lifelong decisions of a low man me, you know what I mean? Um, because in those times you can make a self decision or you can make one out of anger. Um, and I think ultimately it's highlighted to me how the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly is what's um, important because the moment that I, I tip the scale and I become a bit too distracted is the moment that I notice my temper has returned or I notice I'm impatient or I know it's uh, I'm joking around too much or I'm, do you understand? Especially um, temper. I think the, the hardest thing I dealt with during this whole thing was my temper. I was, I was waking up very angry, going to bed very angry. Um, and that anger would, it wasn't an anger of the situation I've been placed in. 
it was the anger at myself for not rising to the responsibility sooner, you know, not finding mm, myself okay. sooner so that I could give, mm. give everybody that relied on me peace of mind in the correct way. Um, because as soon as this happened, I felt like I was battling my, the, the consequences of my inaction, you know, uh, mm. all this time, you know, so mm. instead of, you know, instead of telling my father, don't worry, things will be taken care of when he was fit and healthy. Yeah. I had to tell it to him now when he's mm. in this situation. Um, and then that also has a knock on effect because nobody knows that that's how I'm thinking because I've never given them enough yeah. evidence and substance for that. Mm. You know, mm. um, for example, you know, in Tunisia, my aunt and my grand, to, to, they, they don't know that I may be coming back one day or I'm going to be looking after them or whatever mm. because I haven't kept the contact with them enough or I haven't given them that impression, you know? Yeah, yeah. So they might be more worried than they could be if they knew that. Yeah, mm. yeah. And, and this is it. So mm. it's all about rising, rising to the challenge. And um, I, I think being the proactive biggest... proactive as well, isn't it? That's... So I'm, I, I'm, alhamdulillah, I'd, I'd like to think that I, I get that now, that side of things. My, the only other void I have is like being a father and how to raise my kids. You know, that's something that I don't have the substance for yet. I mean, I'm doing it actively. I'm trying to, but something that I actively need, need to sort of look into deeply and invest time into researching and, and establishing, um, you know, modes of behavior because kids are very unpredictable. You know, when your son doesn't listen to you at three years old, is that because of your behavior? Have you had have you had enough impact and influence on him for him to take you as a joke like someone else would if they're an adult? So that's what I mean. Yeah. Um, and then you think, well, when I was three, I don't remember when I was three, so I can't actually think how I thought about my father at that time. Mm. So this is where it's like a bit, it's very unknown. Um, and you know, is it is is a three year old able to see you as too friendly and thus not fear your, the consequence? Mm. It's very strange. It's hard to, 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 to wrap my head around. Or is yeah. it honestly like a, a Russian roulette where you just don't know what kind of personality trait your child will have, you know? Mm. When my, my mom speaks about me when I was three, and she says that I was just one of those kids that you'd put down in one place and I'd stay there for hours. Like, I would do what I was told immediately. Um, my son is the very opposite. You'll tell him, don't do that. And he'll look at you like he's sad, like, oh, you told me off sort of thing. And then mm. as soon as you look away, he just goes and does it again. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But is what does that mean? Is that his personality, just sort of luck of the draw kind of thing, or is that because of the upbringing these past three years? You know, you just don't know. So, anyway, parents very a black hole, bro. It is, bro. I don't think you could ever figure it out. You know, um, I was I was talking to my wife um, a few days ago about like, you know, like parenting techniques and this and that, and like everyone's not everyone, but. I mean, yeah, everyone's got their take on parenting, really. Mm. And there are many books on parenting. Um, and it's like, because many people struggle with it. Um, but for me, it's like, uh, I think a good sign of someone to take advice from on it is somebody who not only, like the first level is that they've like raised good kids themselves. But that's like only the first level. The, se the level beyond that, which I think is a good level, is is when they've, raised good kids themselves and they've uh, successfully taught others how to raise good kids. And that's going to be like very rare, like out of all the books um, out there on parenting, for example, you're going to find only the top 5% actually did that. You know, like I was reading one book by somebody who taught parents, parents a lot of strategies through different workshops. And then they've got like so many testimonials saying, yeah, it worked. Yeah, it worked. Yeah, it worked. So like, that's what, that's like good. But, like other than that five percent it's like i don't know if your stuff is going to work or yeah, not yeah <laughs> yeah and it's time consuming to do that research yeah employ it, sure. and then it doesn't mm. work you know yeah um definitely oh, like I, I, i'm, I'm trying code. to like get ahead of the curve like read now and stuff but a lot of it i'm just gonna forget by the time it's actually applicable so uh yeah mm. it's tricky to be it's honest. very a lot of things a lot of decisions you have to make with kids is very immediate you know Especially yes, when it comes to, to, yeah, when it comes to teaching them the error of their ways. Like if they do something, you just, mm. in that moment, you've got to behave correctly. You've got to react correctly. It's not something you can plan for. Mm. Um, but also like not much damage can be done in one instance. It, yeah. or you, anything like you eating one, uh, you know, 
fast food meal is not going to make you fat. It's only when you do it again and again that it mm. causes you know problems. So mm. most of the time, alhamdulillah, that's the case. The same with yeah. good stuff, like doing a good stuff once. You know, like people eat one salad and they, they think they're going to actually lose weight from eating that salad. But it doesn't work like that, obviously. Um, so alhamdulillah, you have many chances. You have many chances. You know, bro, actually, actually in Ramadan, um, you know, you told me the news about your dad. And, uh, you know, I kind of saw like how you took it and stuff. And then also another very close friend of mine, he, he lost his dad in Ramadan. And it was completely unexpected. Um, yeah. And so, like, I saw that as well happen. And in fact, it's very difficult for him because he's living in another country to his dad. And because of, you know, the virus situation, he's not able to go. It's and horrible. also because of the, uh, I don't, uh, maybe it's to do with the virus as well. It's been like over two weeks and the, his father's still not buried. And he can't like go and, and kickstart the situation and get it done quickly. He can't attend the janazah. So that is very difficult as well. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's benefits. There's like, oh, at least, you know, he passed away in Ramadan. That's a good sign. He passed away while he was fasting. That's good. Um, but it was very sudden. You know, it was, it was a very sudden, uh, completely unexpected kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, it just, I guess, Yanni, what I try and think is, it, sometimes I think if I died, like, uh, some, I, this is a real situation. Like, my mom will send me a message on WhatsApp, and I'm thinking, well, if I died now and like, I, I, like you can, re you can reply in one minute or one hour or one day. Right. And I just think I don't want to die and have that message unread or unreplied to. Yeah. So for my yeah. mom, I'm going to do like, try and do it more like a one minute response time than a one day response time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Th these yeah. are the little things yeah. where it's like, because that matters, I feel, you know, and I feel like the way you do those day-to-day -day things reflects on the way you'll deal with bigger things, inshallah, you know? Most definitely. I think it's um, something we have to look deeply into ourselves and, and, and really think, you know, we, we, we deal with a lot of hardship and suffering and trials and tribulations. How stupid would we be to deal with all of that and not take, you know, take the invitation to gender seriously, you know? Um, how, how silly must we be to get tested again and again and again and just live with that as the, the dunya and our existence? Like, that was it. My life was suffering, and in the end, it's suffering. Like, that meant nothing, you know? Um, I think when you, do, once again, when you get these tests and you get these trials and you get these difficulties, if you're not thinking about paradise to get you through it, you know, if you're not thinking about it's only temporary, it will, you know, in paradise, this will never happen. This will, it just, it should excite you. Like I get excited if I think about it like that. I really do. I, I think about paradise sometimes during a test and I'm like, subhanAllah, I could never, you know, I'll never go through this again. I'll never go through anything like this again. I'll never have this feeling anymore. You know, um, I'll be with those that I love. Everything I care about will be fixed. Akhi. Like everything. And it's not another realm it's a continuation of my soul my consciousness right now it's it's like it's oh it, it's almost like oh it's happening tomorrow kind of thing mm. you know my memories won't disappear like i'll understand what the situation is i wake up for on yom al-qiyamah knowing that this is what the dunya was about you know it's not like you're it's not like that men in black movie where your mind's just erased and mm -hmm. you're suddenly like a new you know it's not like you're born again and and you've just lost all you know memory you you will understand what you went through it will all make sense mm, um, yeah. and if you can make sense of it now it mm. gets you through things way better mm. um, mm. Crazy, I think uh, that area came to mind I can't give you the tafsir now off the top of my head but I think it's interesting to look mm. into the tafsir of the area uh, about the people of Jannah where they say Inna kunna fi ahlina mushfiqeen. I think that's mm. what it is um, where they were saying they were actually troubled with their families so um, the, that's the people of Jannah. So I don't know. That, that could be interesting. Mm. It's, it's phenomenal. Like, it's to think about eternity, to think about, you know, a never-ending bliss, to think about um, like mm. times like this. I mean, there's no doubt we should be thinking about Jahannam as well and the risks it, risk it poses to us being sent there. Um, 
And I think you've just got to balance it. I think in times of extreme happiness, you should remember not to lose yourself and remember Jahannam. And I think in times of sadness, you should hope for Allah's mercy and hope for Jannah. Because because like right now in this moment where I'm a bit sort of down, if I'm thinking about Jahannam, I'm really going to lose it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but you have to balance yourself. And I think this is it. This is why things were created in pairs. Akhi. When one is up, the other has to bring it down. And when one is down, the other thing has to bring it up and mm -hmm. keep that balance and keep that middle path and just keep pushing forward. Mm -hmm. So what's like the daily, what's like the ongoing situation now that it's been like a month or so since the news? Um, so my father was home. However, last night, last night, I say early hours of yesterday, he was admitted back into hospital. Oh. So yesterday or the day before, in my mind, I can't remember. He, he was admitted back into hospital. Um, uh, but I'm hoping he will be take he'll be out you know because he had a uh, a stent in his stomach which is like a almost like a scaffolding almost like a tube that pushes the tumor out of the way so that food can continue to travel however because of the nature of that device or that structure it's prone to being blocked the moment it's blocked it's like it was never there to begin with because it you know it defeats the purpose um because it's meant to allow food to go through. The whole reason he had it in is because the tumor itself was blocking his ability to to get food to where it needed to go. So the moment that's blocked, he throwing up constantly. You know, um, so I think in Charlotte they were trying to unblock that, and he's get his tech, he's getting chemotherapy done, um, and in Charlotte, you know, you just you have to just take hold of the means, and and I appreciate a lot of people message me. Um, of support and, and you know even you know we set up a GoFundMe thing to to rectify his affairs and rectify the affairs of um, family in Tunisia and to support you know aspects of my family here you know little th things that need to be taken care of and the you know the, the support has been phenomenal um, I have yet to tell my dad because I just don't know how he'd react you know oh, <laughs> um, really? mm -hmm. yeah I haven't told him yet and I'm, I don't know when I'll tell him inshallah I do um, I think uh, it's just at this time. I just, I just want him to focus on himself and his iman and his well-being. And I don't, you know, he's he's like many men who have honor for themselves. I don't think he would um, feel a hundred percent comfortable, you know, getting support and help like that. However, you know, it's there, and it's uh, may Allah accept it from everybody that's that's sort of assisted. Mm. You still there, bro? Yes, sir. Sorry, I, th I thought you were. Sorry, your thing froze. Um, so yeah, that's the day to day because of uh, the chemotherapy. Um, I can't. It, well, because of at the moment he's in the hospital, you can't visit him anyway. But because of chemotherapy, I can't see him really anymore um, because it's just this virus and the risk and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. However, if he does come back, I'm just going to go see him in the garden or something. Uh, keep my distance that sort of thing um because some um, some things mean more to him you know he, he so you just make the most of your time um and i'm gonna put i trust in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these are you know i i think the most important thing i keep reminding myself is this is an isolated incident that only i'm going through you know or he's going through this is this is a situation of many many members of our ummah you know um so it's not a special test or a special, you know, it's something that many members of our Ummah go through. So I make the eye for them and I make the eye for mm. myself um, just, to, just to push forward because there's all kinds of tests, Sahih. And whatever battle you want to pick, it's still a battle to fight. You know, whatever test you, you get given is still a test for yourself. You know, an easy test for me is a hard test for you and vice versa. You just, you just got to take what is given to you and, and, and go through it. Oh, mm. uh, well, what can I do? What happened, bro? What you happened? Fr you froze and then you were laughing afterwards. Oh, sorry. Uh, I just ran out of things to say. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> sorry. So, bro, what would you say, like, uh, for me, for example, uh, Yanni, I was like you, I guess, a month ago. I am like you a month ago in terms of not really expecting anything. Uh, mm. What would be like a good uh, preparation for this uh, kind of event? 
I think to mentally, ment- I mean, everybody's situation is different. I think in the same way I was talking about thought experiments, you know, and in the same way I thought about possible scenarios I could, I could be faced with, I think that's the best place to start. Start by thinking, what would you do in someone else's situation? What would you do if, you know, you received the same news? What, con- like, think about all the consequences that would happen you know that you can you can try and think about mm. how would you mitigate them how would you mitigate them now what would what steps would you take now to make things easier for when that time comes um and a lot of it isn't practical a lot of it is mental a lot of it is how do i adapt my behavior to to prepare myself for tests like this how do i um set myself up reaction wise you know if a, if you almost had a near miss in a car accident What's the last thing that comes out of your mouth before you, you know, I've had that before, I think, where I've, I've almost had a car crash. Alhamdulillah, I never have, but I've almost, you know, hit someone. And I, I think sometimes I, you know, sometimes I, I'm saying, you know, remembering Allah, like, or, or I'll say subhanAllah or something like that. And sometimes I don't say anything. Mm. Do you understand? And sometimes so you shout Himara. <laughs> I don't think. Oh yeah, maybe you never know. <laughs> so do you understand what I mean? So yeah, it's like, yeah. oh, that's a reflection of how I am in this mm. current, you know, period of my life. So that needs sorting out. Um, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sends us many signs and many nudges and many, many, you know, bits and pieces that we need to ponder on. And I think just spending time thinking, spending time alone. Um, you know, have moments to yourself where you just slow things down, analyze your situation, analyze where you are, um, analyze what your responsibilities are, what that means for you as a, as a leader and, and act on it, you know, and, and don't talk about it. I think don't talk about it to people. Like don't talk about your aspirations to people in that sense. Like, Oh, I want to be this and I want to be that. And I'll just do it, be it, live it mm. um, in that moment. Don't think about what people may say because the longer you, you know, the, with time, that becomes you, if you know what I mean. I remember, it reminds me of my cousin. I don't think he listens to this at all. I don't really talk to him as much anymore. However, I remember my cousin, me and my cousin's relationship was very you know, close and stuff. However, I was very much more dominant than he was because I was older than him. You know, so I would you know, push him about a bit. This is when we were younger. And, you know, just I'd be the, the one who calls the shots sort of thing. And I remember actually we were play fighting one day, as we usually do. And usually I'm always the one who wins and stuff. I remember he must have been about 13, 14, something like that. I sort of pushed him and then he just suddenly toppled me and I ended up on the floor. Yeah. And I remember looking up and he was sort of staring down at me. And actually I remember from that day onwards, the personality just completely changed. I remember going down to my uncle and I said to him, what's going on with my cousin? Like what's mm-hmm. going on with him? Yeah. It's very different today. Why is he act like, why is he, his personality just changed overnight. SubhanAllah. And actually I thought, Oh, maybe he's in a mood or something's happened and he's a bit upset, whatever. Actually that became his personality since then. Actually, this was like 10 years ago, bro. Yeah. Wow. That was his, that was his personality since then. It was literally an overnight transformation. Um, and yeah, you could have, in the first week, you could have said, oh, something's going on in his life. That's why he's upset. Second week, you think, oh, this is getting a bit too much now. And then by the, you know, by six months, you're like, this is who he is. This is him now. Yeah. You so know? how did he change? And this is it. So I think a lot of people are very conscious of what about other people. If you, the longer you do it, the more... He, he just became a lot more, um, he, he just developed a way of managing stress and managing um, uh, awkward situations. Like for example, uh, many, many, many teenagers, if they were being shouted at by their mother, for example, or their father, whatever, they would just start an argument back and forth, back and forth. Do you know what I mean? And it just, it'd be chaotic. Okay, I remember I was fascinated. This is way before I was practicing. I was fascinated that, you know, his mum would get upset with him and she would argue with him and he would just sit there and just literally just not say a word mm. right, until she was completely finished. Mm. And then he would say, okay, and that was it. And then he'd walk away. And it was almost like it didn't phase him whatsoever. And I'm not saying that's good or bad. I'm just saying it was a personality development that was wow. just incredible to me. Um, and that just became his tactic. Like his tactic to deal with stress was to just almost not even acknowledge that that was the situation he was in. Mm. And sometimes that's, you know, apathetic and it's not dealing with the issues at hand. 
But it also showed that he knew what he wanted and what he cared about, whether that was right or wrong. He just knew that this is what I care about and this doesn't phase me, despite the fact that it should phase anybody else, you know. Um, little things. It could be something like, oh, um, I'm going to, you know, your, his parents might be like, I'm going to take your phone away as punishment or something like that. And he'd just be like, fine, that'll be it. And then mm. he would just find something else to do this time. It wouldn't be like an argument or this or that. Mm. Um, but yeah, so this is ultimately what I'm saying is that everybody's got the capacity uh, to just keep reminding themselves of who they want to be and how how they want to present themselves. And I think ultimately the biggest thing is to keep making dua for it. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can change your heart. Can, you know, we say, ya qulub qalbi ala um, And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a ch- the turner of heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the turner of personalities, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the turner of situations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can change anybody's condition. Um, so work on yourself, work on the man that you want to be. And, the, you know, we hear, we hear a lot of self-help gurus talking about, you know, be the best version of yourself. Um, but ultimately, that's what we should and try to, to strive for. Mm. Um, whether you reach it or not is one thing however you if you, if you shoot you know shoot 100 shots at a target you will hit the mark a few times you know what i mean yeah and Allah is kinder to... than to let your efforts go in vain mm. 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 and that's where the the area you know like um those who put effort those who strive towards allah then allah will guide them so that's the reward of a striving, not of accomplishing or completely changing, just striving. Mm. So. The ultimate advice for any man in any situation of trying to change and become better is to honestly to slow things down. Whenever you're faced with a, a crisis or decision you have to make, you need to try and effectively slow down that situation and think. I'm not saying, um, maybe not the situation at hand, but just pause, you know, don't react. Just think about how you're about to react. You know, when something makes you angry, you need to find it in yourself to hit that pause button and think what benefit is my anger going to do or me lashing out going to do or me shouting going to do like, where does that lead to? You know, Mm. and how many times do we just act upon impulse and just are filled with regret? Um, so you need to make sure that whatever your reaction is, is constructive, it's beneficial, and it has a, a goal at the end of it, you know. Um, it could be anything, Effie. It could be, you know, it could be, like I said, it could be your son not listening to you. It could be a disagreement with your with your spouse. It could be uh, anything, anything. It could be anything even at work, Effie. It could be anything. Um, and you just have to think a bit further ahead. Just pause here because it's our impulse wants us to just flip. And if, if even if we've got... You know, even if we've got that rage bubbling inside us, then know that you need to go and take some time out. There's nothing wrong with taking time out. You know, I'm not going to deal with this right now. I'm going to pause. I'll come back to this later on. Because, you know, how many times do you get in an argument with someone that actually, if you pause, came back to it later, you know, you look like a fool, apologize, done that behavior and been calm later on and dealt with the situation later on. Um, but yeah. It's just, mm. it's always, a, you just got to think, think, think. This is why a lot of men go gray early, bro, I think, because they're just thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I've got actually a decent amount of gray hairs. Really? I had a couple, but obviously I shaved my head now, so I don't really know. If... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when I cut my hair, I can't see them anymore. Mm. But when it gets longer, then I see them. But uh, it's all good. It's all good. I told you before, bro, I'm just waiting for when I go bald and then I could get uh, get that ginger beard. Bald like head ginger beard. Like <laughs> I do like going bald, bro. It's just so... I've, it's, I've established it now. That's that's just me now. Because <laughs> the whole fancy, spanch, fancy, you know, fancy getting a haircut and going there and whatever, it's just, it's just too much for me now. I think <laughs> get this done, save the money... It's just yeah. it suits, you know. It's it's easy and it's straightforward, and it's almost it's almost like that Steve Jobs sort of, or is it, is it Steve? Yeah, Steve oh, Jobs yeah, sort yeah. of Wear mentality of like just day. buy the same outfit. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's it, bro. Yeah, it's out of my, you know. I don't have to waste that time. I don't have to think about mm. it and what I want to get and what I, mm. just mm. straight. Do you have to keep trimming your beard, bro, so you can uh, have the mask, or is it just a one-time thing? There's still mask regulations. However, it's sort of getting a bit. Like everything, it just gets a bit loose. They, 
Mm. The thing is, when, whenever we have new uh, reg, regulations, they come in hard, like they come in very hard, and then, like anything, they just fade away. Yeah, and then sometimes, yeah. some, so what, what happens though often is that they fade a little bit, and then something, some incident occurs where they're like, oh, no, 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 we're, you know, <laughs> everybody back to stage one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so a lot of those best of Bro, I've um, seen it, man, in the supermarkets and stuff. Uh, you know, maybe two, three weeks ago, everyone was on it, bro. Gloves. Like you see people, I don't know if it's like this in England, but here, you people going to the shop, supermarket, voluntarily, they've got gloves, they've got masks, they've got everything. And now a lot of people, they've got the mask with their nose sticking out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the gloves are gone, you know? <laughs> so I think that's just yeah. how humans are, man. We like, when when it's like the hype is there, well, then we react directly and then you just get used to it and even if it yeah. means like even if you really believe your life is at risk sometimes you just drop the guard like you just i don't know get used it's to just it. too much to keep up isn't it and i think yeah. also you know I, I just have this suspicion that like the media is just pick clutching straws now and they're just panicking because people aren't scared anymore so they're trying to keep pumping out you know the, mm. because it's all that's on the news so people have tuned out you know it's like watching the same show every day yeah people, have, uh, people are tuning out and uh, so they need to start coming up with oh there's a new virus actually by the way mutation and, um, <laughs> <Yeah>. mutation <laughs> and um whatever and yeah, i don't know you know yeah. there's a lot going on in the world obviously you know yeah. my uh, pre um uh, premature conclusion is that um there is a virus of course it's real um, people are dying from it it's just that it's all blown out of proportion um and part of that maybe is due to bad uh, counting practices and all of that and testing, uh, you know, inefficient testing and all of that. Uh, and part of it is, you know, some people are benefiting from blowing out of proportion. Number one player, of course, being the media, you know. So that's, that's my I mean, premature yeah. conclusion. Ultimately, like, um, I'm, I, I, I'm more inclined to believe in uh, people just wanting more money then I am yeah. more inclined to believe that there's a darker, sinister intention behind people's, mm. you know, thought processes because I always narrow it down to the individual. I think all organizations, all companies, everything is made up of individuals with their own um, yeah. desires, motives. You know, they want to go to work and just come home to their family or whatever it mm -hmm. is or live their life. Mm -hmm. However, the vast majority of individuals, the only thing they really share in common is their desire for, for money and more money. So, mm. You know, when, when people say, oh, yeah, people, you know, I'm not going to go into conspiracies again, but when they say that it's all made up and it's all this and it's all that, and they're just trying to control you through the media and that, it takes, it would take a lot of people to have a dark, sinister agenda to be part of that. However, if you say, which is more likely, if you say, oh, they want their ratings to go up, they want more money in their pockets, then we all understand that. We can all get that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, when it comes to fear mongering, it comes to, framing things in a certain way, then it just mm. know that someone's mm. trying to get paid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Clear message here, I think, is humility because, you know, for far too long, I think we've been worshipping modernism, you know, mm. that, this idea that, halas, like, you know, we were, you know, humans were monkeys, bro, back in the day. We were dumb. <laughs> and now we're sick. We're, we're the ones. We're, bro. we're the ones, bro. yeah. Bro, they sent them up to space again, bro. Was yeah. Yesterday, <laughs> yeah. Yesterday, man, we got yesterday. rockets that going up and down. Yeah. Look yeah. at us, bro. But, wow. But, you know, <laughs> this is like one example of just big flop. Yeah, human flop. Um, you know, Dyson. Can't remember the guy's full name, but that he's got that vacuum company, technology company, yeah. all of that. Yeah. So he like flipped a lot of his engineers to start working on ventilators, and the UK government's like, yeah, yeah, we're gonna need twelve thousand of those. Uh, turns out they didn't need any and they just said, you know what, cancel the whole thing. Um, so, they, you know, he, he spent, um, I don't know, but it was, it was tens of millions or more of his own money to kind of flip things around and, and build these ventilators, uh, thinking, you know, um, they know what they need Cash and they, you know, we really need. But uh, they're just like, actually, cancel. Like, we don't need ventilators. Oh, like, we everybody's need cashing out, bro. Everybody's cashing out. The stock markets, you know, I, I sometimes monitor stocks and stuff. Um, I do a few investments myself. But stock market was just up and down because people are, like, trying to suss out the next big thing that's going to come out of this. Yeah. Um, people making money off of masks, for example. Like, there's a there's a sort of company that I, I, I use to produce um, – some of the products I do for graphic design and stuff. And they were just like, Oh, we now have customizable masks, put your design on a mask and we'll sell that. Mm. And that's like, 
it's like, oh, people don't stop. Whenever there's a crisis, they just want to make money out of it. And it's not, yeah, yeah. you know, so it's, it's just mm. the nature of the dunya, bro. And I think mm. obviously with capitalism. They say to things. make money when the blood's in the streets. That's when the money's made, isn't it? It's part of it. It's part of it. Yeah. It's part of it. Because, you know, yes, it's crazy, bro. The, you know, like uh, I've, I've listened to quite a few people who are like, kind of a finance experts or whatever, personal investment, personal finance experts and stuff. The, the rule that is like a common across all of them, very simple rule. If you're going to invest in stock market, put it in and just don't touch it. Like no matter what, don't touch it. But what do people do? What do humans do? They touch it. Like when there's yeah. a crisis, they sell at a loss and then they're like, oh man. But those who don't sell, they get, you know, generally they get like 10% uh, profits every 10 years or so. Uh, you know, the average is like that kind of gain. But it's just so many humans can't just leave it there. It's just yeah. mad, oh, it's mad to think about it. I'm sure, you know, that, that, you know that is, it's all about discipline and mindset and stuff. And it's something that the only reason I carry on with it is to develop it, to develop that mindset, to develop that. I didn't know you had stocks, bro. You do it through um, yeah. one of these uh, apps, yeah, these bank ones. Bank yeah, apps. I mean, there's always something new that I'm trying out and mm. dabbling in. Um, mm. Do you own any 3M or Zoom? I don't think so. No. Mm. At the moment, it's mostly um, tech companies because it's just been on like a... Bro, it's like in the seven years, it's gone up like 300% or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. so it's just like tech... I mean, it's just, it just makes sense to me. Like tech, as long as, you know, there's no sort of blackout, it's just going to go up. We yeah, all yeah. use tech and we just keep using more and more tech. So why not just, you know, yeah. stick with that. Um, I actually own two shares of Slack. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is that something they gave you for being a mind heister? <laughs> Use that. No, like a year ago, I went through a big effort to open a you know, brokerage account or whatever. And I bought, I, I did an, like a test, um, you know, thing of buying. I just put a hundred dollars into the account. I was like, what can I buy for a hundred dollars? And Slack was trading at, I think $35. So I was like, I got two of them. I couldn't afford three with a hundred dollars. So I got two, you know, and since then, well, I never logged in and I, that's what I've got um, today. You know? <laughs> I don't know. Is it not up? Um, I actually, it might be break even because I know Slack dropped a lot um, in the last year. There's a lot yeah. of competition from Microsoft and stuff, so people don't really believe in it. But I think it's around break even, Allah. A lot of the stuff I do now is sort of AI based, anyway. Um, okay, bro. Okay. It is. It is because I don't have to. You know, we live in a time where we can just like even I've got like a savings app that yeah. links up to my bank account. I don't know if you heard of Plum. It's called. Okay. And it just sort of it's just an algorithm that goes These through my names account. Are Plum. Yeah, I know. It's called Plum. <laughs> I'm not giving them free shout outs, but the idea is that it analyzes your incoming and outcoming outgoing every month or whatever, or every week or so. And it just calculates how much you can basically afford without really feeling it to mm. save. So, sort of yeah. and okay. then you can split, you can either just put that away or you can put it, you can invest it or you can do both and just split it in a certain percentage. And then mm. you pick like an investment portfolio and all this other stuff. Um, obviously with stuff like that, you've got to just be careful what you're picking and choosing. Um, but yeah. yeah, and there's also a new app that came out um, by, I think it was endorsed or worked on by Sheikh uh, Joe Bradford. Um, it's called Zoya. There you and go. It's very, uh, you heard of it? Halal there you go. investing for everyone. Is that, is that Zoya? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you've, you've got... You see, I had it when it was in beta. Right? Yeah, so that's pretty cool to look at. Uh, I'm mm. not a subscriber of it because I'm not like mm. very like... That you know, into it, yeah. This. But, however, if, it, if anybody is, then that's a place mm. to go. Yeah, um, yeah. I would advise, you know, I mean, I'm not here trying to promote things. I'm trying to just say that anyone who is, hasn't got a clue what we're talking about to look up the halal haram of things before they get deeply involved in stuff. It's very easy to get involved in, like, stuff that's completely impermissible, mistaking it for, for what is... Yeah, bro, you know, uh, Slack was, uh, according to Zoya, Slack was, like, impermissible at one time. Uh, really? I think because uh, too many of their assets were... Uh, basically, they're holding too much cash, which counts as hoarding, which is not permissible. I right. think that was a reason. Um, but the thing with these companies is like every three months, they update their numbers and stuff. And then so three months, they could be haram. And then three months later, they could be halal. So mm. it's tricky for us. But um, it is what it is, man. There are some, it is what it is. I'm sure like, 
solid ones that are always going to be halal pretty much i guess so yeah i know like one that i was looking at was like tesla which is obviously an obvious one but it's just like mm. that was coming up as straight green bro so i was like oh mm. it's very interesting yeah um you know something that large you just think oh you'd automatically think oh there's got to be some issues and there probably mm. is but this is the dunya bro um obviously disclaimer is to check with people of knowledge check with your resources before you do anything um, you don't want no responsibility <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I love him because bro, everybody's trying to, like, I see it all the time, Achie, people that are preying on Muslims' um, money without mm. actually thinking about the halal and haram of it. Like, And I fell into that trap of when I was at uni, bro. Like, someone approached me who was Muslim and he said to me, oh, listen, one of my blah, blah, blah. And I just, I made the fatal mistake of just thinking, oh, he's Muslim. He, he knows mm. what he, was he approached me. Was that by any chance? No, it was it was something other than ACN is the same thing. Same thing has what happened to me with that, but this was something else. Um, I think it was it was like forex trading or something, binary right. options or something mm. like that. Mm. Like, I remember like just thinking, oh, this looks like mm. you know gambling trading. Mm. Well, it didn't at first. At first, it looked like just trading stocks and shares, or whatever. Obviously, I didn't understand what I was doing. I was just following the leader sort of thing. Mm. And I thought, this person has approached me. He knows what I'm about. He knows how I present myself as a Muslim. Mm. Um, and he's Muslim himself. So, boom, yeah, let's let's do it. And then it wasn't until, like, I was sort of... I was battling my, my um, mindset because it needs a mindset to do well any of this. And as I was, like, scrolling through the terms and conditions, this is already when I've already been involved, scrolling in, and then there's, like, this under like all this small print there's like this big grayed out gamble aware logo mm. you know what i mean and i was wow. like what what's that about like that don't make no sense mm. i thought this was and that's what that's when i just lost it bro and then i started because when things come out and they're quite new there's not that much in terms of resources of fatawa and stuff like that yeah. however that's when the fatawa started coming out because you know and then i was like oh this is an absolute joke i can't believe that this was because it felt like it but it didn't but mm. then so can a lot of things, you know. Mm. One, anyway. one mistake I made was buying silver online. Yeah. Honestly, I I remember looking into it, bro. And I even told some friend of mine who asked me about it. I was like, you know, I'm sure I saw on Islam QA where he's like, yeah, it's fine. But there's no such fatwa exists, man. Like when I rechecked it. So I don't know why, but I bought silver online and that's not permissible. Um, so I'm, at least why now I know for permissible? sure. Uh, because Sorry, yeah, I've never silver and gold, um, must the transaction must be made uh, yed and biyed, you know, hand to hand, oh, okay. like kind of face to face kind of thing. So you can't buy it online, basically. Uh, like fr a friend of mine, he wanted to basically, uh, he wanted to preserve his wealth, ba basically, because um, all these countries are printing so much money that uh, most currency is going to get devalued. So the only way to preserve your money would be to move your money to another, like asset class like maybe silver or gold which would retain its value at least yeah yeah um, but it's like he's like all the jewelry shops all the gold shops they're closed so how am i gonna buy gold and i was like oh i thought you could buy online but he's like no 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 and then then i rechecked it and i was like what drove me to buy silver online like why did i do that? <laughs> i think it, well yeah. for something like that i just I mean, you might not even looked up a fatwa because on the face value you just think it's you know buying. yeah like if i can buy a you know whatever online Watch then why can't yeah, yeah 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 anyway okay. this is it's important okay and this is why you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests our intentions time and time again and there's mm. it's, you know the people to worry about the people that just want to overlook that and want to skip that part of the plan yeah, you know? yeah. Um, i wanted to ask that, you bro about yeah. um because you know every year actually around ramadan um there's this talk about zakah and charities trying to get your zakah and misusing zakah so what was your I mean, I don't know if you even paid Zakir this year, right? So I don't know. But, um, you know, what was your kind of uh, approach to Zakir this year? Uh, what did I do? Oh, um, it was, I was thinking, okay, I, my Zakir is due. Mm. Um, but I just, I hadn't actually got to the point where I started looking to where to pay it when somebody messaged me um, regarding uh, a project, uh, a message that was struggling or something i can't remember um essentially i asked them is it zakat applicable to which they spoke to their shuyuk basically i think the message was in in um in debt it had lots of debts to pay off mm. uh, at that point because they were, they were trying to build something but they also had debts or something along those lines 
so initially when it was like oh pay to build something that wasn't as okay applicable yeah. but then when it was about the debts that they had then it was yeah um, so that's so because it just came to me at that moment literally mm. i was i was about within the hour i was about to do it and then it came to me i was like oh there you go okay i'll just do that um mm. Mm. but it's not something um it's it's something that there's always things in my in, in my dean that I, I have to like think okay at some point i need to work on this or this or this you know and yeah. zakir is definitely one of them zakir, mm. the understanding and the research on zakir mm. and i just i've never sat in a dars i mean mm. i don't sit in doros anyway because there isn't any <laughs> um <laughs> not really anyway here when i go to london and the brothers are like oh there's a dars going on then i i just go with them but mm. i need to just establish some sort of um you know, it's just just some foundational understanding of, of a lot of aspects yeah. of the dean. Um, mm. you, know, you know, two things way. I took out of this, two kind of new, I guess, realizations or something that I took from this Ramadan was, number one, uh, Taraweeh at home is something I think I want to continue next year. I think it's really good. And uh, number two is about Zakir. It's like... Um, if I can, as much as I can, I think I just want to give zakat to people like I know, like distant family or whatever. Hmm. Um, as, you know, and it's like I, I did get the issue that I was like, okay, how do I know for sure that it's going to be zakat applicable? Are they poor enough and this and that? And if you really think about it, like people, like what are you going to do? You know, are you going to in in like taking charity organizations out of it? Are you going to go and like? look for someone's bank statement and ask for that and then be like, okay, yes, you're poor. Okay. No, it's like either they're known to be poor or for example, somebody doesn't have a job and you know, they're not the type that's going to have mad savings. So halas, they're poor, you know? So, yeah, you know, yeah. and I think that's how it, it kind of used to work. And that's the most normal way. It's not like down to the penny, like, okay, are they in this category? Are they miskeen? Are they fakir? So yeah. there are some people that I know like that in Algeria and stuff. And so it was really refreshing actually to know that, my zakat is just going to go like from me to my cousin, from my cousin to them in their hand. And there's no actually no organization between us. Yeah. And um, I know the living expenses over there. I know what this can do for someone. And that's really refreshing, bro. So definitely it's a good a lot, way you find to go. a lot of the time, those people are the forgotten people. Um, not to, um, I'm not mm. tarnishing or dis diminishing anything that charity organizations do. Mm. Um, but these individuals are, in that gap in between where they're in between us and they're in between those that are severely destitute and war-torn, etc. cetera. Um, mm, true. Yeah. So they're in, and this is what, why I was telling everybody to watch that. I'll be in the show mm. uh, because it almost focused on this, this missing sort of link that we don't really think about. It's mm. the poor people in the Muslim countries that are just sort of, you know, they've got, they're dealing with severe hardships however you wouldn't know unless you spoke to them mm. do you understand mm. yeah. like you know a refugee when you see one you know someone who's in a war when you see one you know someone but these there are people that are very poor but you just don't know you don't know the situation so you speak yeah. to them yeah um yeah but yeah mm. and uh, the the you know i think with the whole internet stuff especially internet like being more used like all over the world not just in some countries um yeah. some chum, very transparent char charities have come about like mm. i was i was made aware of one called uh, tahaddi tahaddi means challenge right in arabic um this journalist yeah you could call him journalist uh, rani mehdi he um he's an algerian journalist he lives in london and he, he he does like a daily youtube show or whatever he talks about issues in algeria and stuff like that and uh I don't know if he started this or he's just very involved in it, but through his kind of show with all the viewers he has, he was like pushing people towards this tahaddi and then they're like documenting everything they're doing. And it's just so transparent. Everything's done by volunteers. And so there's that type of organization that we have now, which, yeah, maybe they don't have this huge expertise in how to distribute aid, especially in emergency situations. But they do have the ability to buy food wholesale and they do know of poor people. And so that I feel like was quite seemed quite effective to me. Yeah. I mean, I'm not in the charity sector, but um, there are these new kind of types of organizations that it's like smaller, smaller, but more like in the trenches kind of thing. And yeah, I like that stuff. Yeah, it's, it definitely gives a, it gives an actual story to the to what you're doing. I mean. Uh, if we were to put like uh what's the word 
we were to connect your brain up to a monitor and and see the effect giving charity has on your brain like actually physically being there and doing it mm. then you would see that you know the benefit that it actually has to you and your well-being mm. however when that part of it is taken away mm. it's almost like there's something lacking you know and when i was that's the thing that fascinated me about the show and being that transparent and just seeing people's reactions like that that just blew me away and it just made me so much more involved in charity work and, and just giving more and stuff like that and it just made me think subhanallah um it's it's amazing how like in, in the advancements that we have technology and whatever we lose some really fundamental things along the way and it's it's good to think and, and to head back to that mm. yeah bro definitely bro i'll be honest with you now i said to you before i was feeling very unwell wasn't i you're feeling <laughs> worse I'm feeling a bit worse now, so I have to wrap it up now. It's part yeah, of that. Bro. Hopefully, I <laughs> um, distracted you for an hour and a bit. No, I hope that I was okay, but literally just this second, it just hit me like a train again. Oh, um, man. I don't know why. I just suddenly got very ill in the past oh, few gosh, hours. Um, but yeah. Inshallah. Perfect timing, anyway. Uh, I think it was a good episode, bro. We covered a lot of good stuff, that. important stuff, perspective stuff, isn't it? Yeah. So, alhamdulillah. Um, yeah, if anyone wants to check out, uh, well, Mohammed's done two episodes on Freshly Grounded. I've done one now. So if you just YouTube it or whatever, you'll find that, inshallah. And uh, we've got, as usual, mindheistpodcast.com for any comments and uh, emails, suggestions. Um, once, you know, inshallah, we'll, we'll eventually get to answering those. Uh, yeah. Probably maybe next episode, inshallah. Um, so get, get those in before next episode so we can maybe do a whole session on that. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone for your, all of your support and listening. And uh, inshallah, you benefited from this one, especially because, uh, you know, it's better to learn from, uh, like Muhammad wasn't maybe fully prepared for it, but now you're having a full session on how to prepare for it kind of thing. So inshallah, we can benefit from that, man. I know, I know for me, uh, I'm trying to benefit from it. Um, it sounds bad, benefit from your difficulty, you know, but um i guess we should do that isn't it like it's a reminder it's a reminder that allah has provided to me through you so yeah, inshallah yeah. we can benefit and uh, may allah you know give a quick recovery to your dad and in the meantime yeah, yeah. make it a means of purification for him yeah, yeah, and make yeah, it a means yeah. of drawing closer and closer to allah yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. thank you for having me once again on the mind highest podcast <laughs> uh, alhamdulillah um yeah Inshallah, we'll be a bit more, um, what's the word, consistent. I've had a bit of a dip as they're all going on. But I think everybody expects that in these days. They know that we're up and down. <laughs> so alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, bro. Yeah, no. everyone. Thanks for listening. And uh, see you around, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Shadu an la ilaha 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 